Where do I get more money? Hmm. It's a good question. Hi, I'm Steve Bennett with Caravanserai Project in the Seed Lab. And we are focused on helping people on their journey and making major breakthroughs to have bigger social impact and be transformative. So we were doing a series of videos and this first one is about sustainability. Um, it is a question that everybody asks us to start with. It's actually is the right question, even though that's not all there is to it. But no money, no mission, right? So we go to what else you really need to have. And this is about the things that make sustainability happen and help you create the money. And one is surrounding yourself with talent. If you don't have a talented team, it is maybe one of the biggest breakthroughs in success. People who are very successful realize that it's the people around them that make the difference. Second of all, you, in the long term, you need to do good work. You need to do best practices. We often, in social impact work, particularly in not-for-profits, respond to our funding sources that make us do less than best practices because we don't even get funded to do best practices. But one of your goals in creating sustainability is to go after and secure your work around best practices. Third, and connected to that, is having impact, having real impact not just measuring things of units served, but what comes out at the end, what kind of impact. You also, from that, you wanna create social change. Transformation is not about just a transaction. It's about, over time, transforming not only the people that you may be serving or have direct impact with, but the systems. We're gonna talk a lot more about that. And then the, the, the thing that, we forget so often because we feel like we're in a resource challenged world. We think, okay, given our money, we're doing good work, a good service. But the truth is that if you really wanna have sustainability, you're gonna go for a beneficiary experience that's excellent. And we'll talk more about that in detail. But I wanna do a little framework. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the future organization being a platform organization. And I'll explain that better because it's, it's somewhat complicated, okay? But it, it's dynamic enough to deal with all of the, the um, variables and the fast changing of the future. Uh, and we're gonna talk about some practical steps because frameworks are fine, but people, you, when you're doing this, you've got to have practical steps. And then I want to talk a little bit about one of the challenges in that is how to approach issues to find new opportunities. People often feel stuck in revenue streams or programs they're doing. So how do you find those new opportunities? And so we're going to go through those three things. This is stuff that Caravanserai has uh, curated over time because what we're really about is helping you make big breakthroughs. We do some other videos, which you can also look at, at leadership, impact, transition versus transformation uh, that kind of complete the picture to make a big breakthrough. We're not trying to cover everything in the world here. We're trying to cover those things that we can distill in a way that makes it make sense to you and make you more uh, able to have success in the future. And we'll constantly talk about the future and transformation. So now, every time we talk about this, people still wanna talk about fundraising and development, which is fair enough. And this isn't really a program to do, help you do fundraising and development, but let me, let me make a, a few statements about it. Um, part, partly because of my own background in this area, but um, not-for-profits are designed to take advantage of tax-free donations, right? So it makes sense for a lot of people, but it, there's some real advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one of the challenges that everybody talks about is I don't raise enough money and my uh, the cost of things that I do, the work I do, is disconnected from the amount of money I get. There's no direct correlation. 
And those two things are huge obstacles for folks and huge obstacles from the point of view of, of uh, good management, good operational sense. So uh, we also keep finding ourselves in areas where our money is program restricted. So we starve our overhead, our management, our administration. There's a lot of talk in philanthropy today about the starvation of not-for-profits because it strangles uh, leadership. So, um, and, it, and, and of course, if, if you can't afford your overhead and the money is not consistent, like grant money or specific program money, it puts real people's jobs at risk. It puts your programs at risk. And it's also, when you do that, you're total about a totally focused on transactional business. Uh, and when you get stuck there, that's when you end up saying, am I really having impact? Am I really doing what I want to do? Is this organization going to be able to survive? Now, when you think about fundraising and development, so many people come to me and say, you know, how do I get more grants? Because I, I work in that area. Well, that is not a good question, really, because you don't, grants are great, but they don't sustain an organization over time. Think about where money comes from. In a, a report on fundraising and giving in 2018, 5% of all donor do dollars came out of corporations. And corporations are more and more market-driven in their donations. So if you don't have an advantage, you can take a corporation that, that is, supports their marketing effort. It's much harder today to get corporate money. Uh, second of all, Foundations are a source of money. It represents only 16% of giving, and most of it is not money that is ongoing. I don't know foundations who want to support a program ongoing, right? 9% is bequests. That's a lot of homework. It's a good area to raise money in for a lot of people, particularly if you're an older organization and you should be doing it. But 70% of all giving is through individuals. And so you need to design your program around where your money is going to come from. And of course, I love individual giving because so much of it is what we call soft money. It's general operating funds. And that's what we starve to death in, in not-for-profits. I want to say a word about event, events. Events are great. And they're also horrible. Small events we think about the cost of the um, the venue or the food or or all of this stuff, but we rarely realize the cost of our staff. And those of you who do events and run a not-for-profit, you know that it eats your staff alive. You kind of have to put the whole organization on hold when you do these events. The truth is you shouldn't do many events. You should only do events is if you're going to really follow up and they create leads for you or it's very significant to your branding or your advocacy. But otherwise, most events are not worth the effort and they're very expensive. The cost uh, relationship between income and cost of an event is very poor uh, fundraising. So I'd say leave it alone. But design your programs under where you think money's gonna come long-term that'll be sustainable. This is a key issue to start with. Now, let me talk a little bit about platform organizations, because this can be a little confusing, but there, there's a movement, and, and a movement that's long overdue, that people that we want to impact should have their own voice and be self-determining about what happens to them, rather than us, you know, developing something and hope people come to it. So let me give you a headline for the future. The headline for the future will be, our organization has become a platform for thousands of groups of people which have created a movement and in full force is moving forward into the future. And the, the model for this is that groups of people organize, self-organize, we're going to talk more about this concept later, and they help design what they want to have as outcomes. They own the outcomes. And a platform organization exists to help them do that, not determine for them how to do that. And so the idea is a sense, if you've ever seen a bridge built, they build scaffolding first, and then they come in and pour the concrete and build it step by step. 
Theoretically, what we want is organizations that build scaffolding for groups of people to determine their own future. This keeps it alive. This keeps it tied to the people who are getting the benefit. This actually supports social change. There's a lot of examples of that. I won't go into many of them today. But, but to do this, you need to listen deeply as an organization. You need to constantly learn and adapt to help people on their own journey. Caravanserai is a platform organization and our programs are scaffolding for people to build their own enterprise. We are a model of that. It takes a great feedback loop and you, you, there's two things you always need to do when you're doing this kind of work. You've got to constantly scan the environment, the future, and walk, look at future trends. We're going to talk more about that. Second of all, you need to support future leadership. You need to identify and give jet fuel to leaders coming on board. Uh, and, and there's some really interesting work in this area uh, that we're going to talk about in some of the other videos. So let me let me give you a few talking points about this, that you you want to constantly search and look at different angles on your business from different viewpoints. Um, we, we were talking to someone earlier today who was so tunnel vision, she wasn't really seeing all the opportunities that surrounded what she was doing. And yet she kind of knew about them. Uh, you need to identify micro, macro trends, the big trends that are happening. Uh, I was involved in a project 15 years ago, and they said, handheld devices will lead the future. Oh, boy. Uh, fortunately, we listened to that, uh, and it was a key for us. Um, you also need to have your own point of view. Uh, you need to be bringing something to all of that. It can't just be a response to everybody else. You, you've got to have your own identity if you want to be sustainable and you want to be a platform. Um, you need to dedicate um, yourself um, to finding out what of all of those things you see are the most important insights, are the most compelling insights. This is kind of like a checklist. It's, it's maybe a little long list here, but all of these things add to this. Um, you then need to look at those insights and see where are the biggest opportunities to start change. One of the issues here is where do you start with this stuff, right? So you want to look at starting change. Uh, make sure that you're able to evaluate it in some way. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about this today. Um, and but we really want to be evaluating impact, not just measuring what we do. We want outcome measurement, of course. There's a lot of stuff on this, but, but just in, in as a concept, you need to make sure that you're doing that. You also have to provide effective ongoing communication. You need to be able to tell your story and you need to keep people engaged. And one of the ways of doing this, of course, when you're doing this kind of transformative work with building a platform organization, is you need to have people understanding all the stuff that I've talked about already in this video. You've got to share that and be open to bring them along and tell that compelling story. You need to do serious um, uh, continuous in, in, continuous improvement, which is constantly asking why you're doing it, uh, what matters about it. Uh, you need to constantly look forward into future resources and keep redefining your audience. Your audience constantly changes. So these are things that kind of get you out of that rut that you go get into too often when you're in a transactional mode, that you don't have time to look at that. So in building a, a platform organization, there's a lot of dynamics going on there and a lot to comprehend and sort through. And it, it, it needs some real coaching and work to do this in a support group, really, which is often your talented team that's around you. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about what are that can what what pieces of this can really drive success, the, the stuff that you need to emphasize. And as we started, Got to focus on revenue. You've got to know your potential funders and go deeply to understand them and understand what's important to them. We think because we have a good story or we have a good cause that people should support us. That's, that's, that doesn't work. That just doesn't work. You've got to look at where your 
what you think you need to be doing and the people you're the beneficiaries of what you're doing where what they want and make sure it's aligned with the funder if it's not aligned with the funder you're not going to have ongoing revenue it's just not going to happen so you you need to target and profile funders and really understand what they need uh, you also need to dedicate resources to your revenue streams uh, one of the things that I see all the time is I'll see a large organization with maybe 150 staff. They're doing great work and they have two people in development. What kind of nuts is this? Uh, I mean, honestly, um, if you're in the private sector, you build a product, you market it and you sell it. And there's other stuff, supply chain, inventory, etc. But a company that would do that and not have a sales team or have two people selling you would they wouldn't exist. How do you think you're going to exist if you don't invest long term and consistently in your revenue, whether you want to call it sales or fundraising or whatever it is, you kill yourself in this area. Third is we talked this, about this earlier is the importance of your talent. You, you need to not wait for people to come and say, I want to work for you or you want to post a passive job. You want to go find the talent that you need to make this successful, and you need to curate each one of those positions. You need to really understand what you need in that position, what you need as a leader to complement you. This I'll talk about constantly, but you need to curate those positions and you need to go find and search out the people that you want. And you also need to surround yourself with honest brokers, advisors, a kitchen cabinet, Find people, small group, three, four people that are kind of like your personal board that you can go to and tell them the truth and they will tell you the truth because you can get lost in a leadership vacuum where everybody around you is telling you you're smart and telling you how wonderful you are. And when you're successful, it gets worse. Get yourself some honest brokers who will keep you down a notch and keep you your feet back on reality. Okay. so. We talked earlier about, we're gonna end this video here in a moment talking about how, how do you approach finding new opportunities? And it's some of the things that we talked about before, but it kind of starts with you really analyzing what your strengths are as an organization and what, not only your strengths, but what value do you bring that you can demonstrate and you can describe, okay? You need to look at a much wider audience probably than you've looked before. Uh, sometimes you get wrapped up in your geography or uh, the type of service or, or type of impact you want to have. And, and you may realize it's much broader than that, particularly, of course, with technology today. You need to stop and, and understand what best practices are. Uh, we get caught up in owning, you know, we run such a great program. Well, let me tell you, if you haven't really looked at that in two or three or four years, you're, you're stuck in the mud. And, and you need to follow through, make mistakes. And I know people say you gotta make so many mistakes to be successful. I don't know about that, but, but you sh can't let them slow you down and you can't let them stop you from taking reasonable risks. You need to follow through and be resilient and keep going. So, we have um, Institute for the Future has this title about dynamic, volatile futures. And clearly that's true. Things are moving faster all the time and it's a challenge. So one of the key, fo key actions here is you've got to keep a focus. And so we are doing this set of uh, videos on leadership which is about mindset, skills, and approach, and impact, and how you keep your focus, and how you move from a transitional to a transformal, transformational organization. And these are all a series of kind of focused breakthroughs with the idea of having the big breakthrough, which is having a sustainable, well-led, impactful organization that transforms the future. Thank you for watching. Big breakthroughs are possible. Uh, it's not easy, it's a challenge. Um, you just have to keep moving forward. You can make mistakes, you don't have to do it all at once. It's a, it's a process, it's a, it's a journey that you're on. And we're here to help you with that journey. Uh, that's what our videos are about. So if you get a chance, please take a look at our other videos. And also, 
you can download our free ebook on big breakthroughs.